Yeah, that's nice. What's up, guys? It's RevJ again. Uh, you've got the Rebuild Everything Yukon behind me here. Hopefully it's not too washed out, the lighting situation. A little weird right now in springtime here. Um, so the reason I'm out here is if you guys follow me on Instagram, at rev underscore j underscore hd. I'll put it on the screen here somewhere. Uh, you guys know that when one of the first things I did when I bought the Rebuild Everything Yukon, uh, aside from getting it tinted, was that I went ahead and changed out those stock fog lights for LEDs. I didn't really do a video about it because I didn't think it was worth it, but for a couple reasons, I think it's time to revisit it. One, it was a really simple thing to do. The stock fog lights are just kind of garbage. They're a plastic lens, they get foggy. No pun intended, like the plastic gets foggy. They're useless in the actual fog because they're not like a yellow and they're not bright enough to really do anything. Uh, so I thought it was time for those things to go. So as usual, I hit up Amazon and I looked around, looked to see had some good reviews, was the size I wanted. I wanted to go LED and I didn't want to spend a ton of money. And so I found these and the ones that are currently on the Yukon, which again, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see, are the ones from Nylight. Now it's a pair of LED fog lights. They've got a little bracket on them there and they've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve LEDs and they put it a good amount of light. I was real happy with them. Um, I just hooked them up to the existing switch using the existing harness. They've got two open wiring leads. You just plug them in there. It's not super complicated stuff. Most of you guys could probably figure it out. I did that. They were working great and then after about, I don't know, I've had the truck for what, like six, seven months? So I would say after about five, six months now, they crapped out, or one of them did at least. The one that was on the left side here, or the right side if you're in the passenger side, whatever. Uh, the one that was there decided to stop working. I tested it off a couple different 12 volt sources, put it on the charger, put it on the battery, put it on a little bench tester. It doesn't work, it occasionally flickers, but it will not stay lit, so something internally died on it. I don't know enough about how they work inside to bother fixing it. And I think the pair was only like 60 bucks. However, they come with a two year warranty. So I contacted the manufacturer or the rep through Amazon. Uh, English was not their first language. They definitely tried. Uh, they wanted me to send pictures of the light. I don't know how you send pictures of a dead light, so I just took a picture of the one not working, uh, I guess, good enough. Uh, and after some back and forth and whatever, that was good enough for them and they sent me out a new light, which I've got sitting over here. So I just wanted to come back, take a look at these lights, kind of revisit the idea, how I have them hooked up, how I got them installed, and my overall sort of satisfaction with them. So yeah, let's go ahead and get in here a little bit and we'll take a look at it. So here is the old one first, and I'll hold it up here. And I'll get a zoom of it too. Um, the casing and stuff on it's still good. There is a little bit of you know salt speckle and stuff because it was mounted on the exterior of a Wisconsin truck. They know we're going to be doing these things. It's for off-road use. Its intended purpose basically is to be used on trails and on trucks and stuff like that. So it's not like we're using an indoor LED or something like that. Uh, it is a positive and negative lead. Just a simple two-wire hookup with some insulation there. Um, really decent gauge wire. I wasn't expecting much out of it. Usually these type of electronics don't have very good wire on them. It's usually super thin speaker wire. This stuff isn't the best, but it's not the worst. It probably looks like a, a decently insulated, uh, what is that, maybe like a 14 gauge, 12 gauge wire? It worked great and the actual light output was solid on it, but like I said, it just stopped working. I had it to a couple 12 volt sources and it just failed. I don't see any obvious reasons why. Nothing looks like burned out. Doesn't have like an ozone-y smell, although I don't know if an LED would when it burns out. I've actually never had an LED uh, burnout in something like this, although I did just have my LED taillight burnout recently, which I put on Instagram. You have to buy it as an assembly for these things. That was kind of annoying, but thankfully it was only like 35 bucks and went in pretty simply. Was not happy getting pulled over about that. So let's compare that now to the new one. Um, toss this back over here. So here's the new one. Looks pretty much exactly the same. Well, because it is, again, logo on this side, the same O-ring seal on the inside of the actual uh, sort of housing here. Looks about the same. I don't see any major differences between the new one and the old one. They have good ratings. I'm overall decently happy with them. You know, this has got the same wiring on it, same gauge, same insulation. It's the exact same thing. They just sent me a single. They didn't send me a full replacement set. So I'm hopeful that the driver's side one is gonna stay working. Uh, it's been working since. It'll work right now if I hit the button, so uh, I'm optimistic. Uh, they also sent me a new set of brackets here. The little swivel bracket and the attachment hardware. I've already got it on the old one here, you guys can see. It's just adjusted straight up right there, basically. So let's go get down there. I'll show you guys the installed one and then I'll show you the one off the bracket and how I'm gonna get it hooked up. 
<laughs> so I'm kind of jammed in here from the side. But you can see that is the currently installed one. Um, basically, when you pull out the factory one, it's got like a rounded lens on it that fits up exactly into this sort of uh, sheath. So you guys can see this one's pretty centered in the actual opening there. You know, it's not exactly perfect. Again, rounded lens, square light, but uh, it fits pretty good. It doesn't protrude or anything like that, and it aims the beams fairly straightforward. The little adjuster nut on the top there does let you kind of put tilt and cant on it, uh, which is nice. So this one here, again, I'm just going to take a look at it. It's got the same sort of salt spray on the outside that the dead one does. Same look to the lens. No burned out LEDs or anything like that. If I go hit the switch right now, it'll fire right up no problem. Again, no real indication of why that one failed. I'd love to figure it out. Maybe I'll tear it down or something on camera if you guys are interested in that and see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, but for right now, I think the goal is to get the replacement one on and working because in the evenings, it's really nice to have a little extra light power, especially without having to go to your brights. All right, guys, I flipped over to their side here and I definitely also just realized that I've been chewing gum pretty much the entire time during this video. How wonderfully professional is that? Um, I should spit it out. However, it tastes good, so deal with it. Um, on this side again, just got the opening over here. So if we zoom in on the bracket here, you guys can basically see it is just a square uh, chunk of sheet that is, well, at one point had a coat of paint on it. It doesn't anymore, it looks like. Uh, and it's got a hole drilled in it, which is the size of the single screw, the mounting screw there, coming out of the top of the old harness, or the old uh, bracket, I should say. So uh, the other side of it here, which is probably harder to see, and I don't know if I can get the camera in there, is got two screws that go through existing bolt holes where the old plastic bracket went through. They're just run down in there through the top. You can't see the other sides of them, but they're in there pretty securely. If you guys were to make your own brackets, you can definitely do it the same way using the existing hardware holes from the stock bracket, which I took out, or you can just drill a couple new holes. There's plenty of places in there on the back side of this valence and the lower tab of the bumper here that you can attach to, depending how big of a light. These aren't super heavy, maybe a couple, couple pounds, two pounds each maybe, and that piece of sheet should be enough to hold them. They don't bounce around crazy or anything like that, so I've been pretty happy with the bracket itself. You could definitely put a reinforcement on it or put like a crimp or a, a uh, like a channel in the middle of it, a bead I should say, if you had a bead roller. Uh, that would stiffen up the piece of sheet just a little bit. Doesn't really need it. If you were to go with a heavier light, I would definitely say it's a good idea. Uh, first thing we gotta do though to install the new one here is that we've gotta put the bracket back on the top exactly the same way I have it on here because it lined up really well. Thankfully, that's just pretty much cranked all the way to the top. So I'm gonna open up the bag of hardware here. And in it, we've got the bracket, same exact bracket, mounting screw for the top, and four of these guys, little sort of uh, tightener screws that go in from the side. I don't know how good you guys can see those. And a few washers, and as well, there's the one we need, the big nut for the top that attaches it to our bracket. So. Gonna grab the new light here, and I've got an adjustable wrench. You could grab, I don't know what size is that. Probably 10 millimeter would be my guess, but I just, now if we look at the way I've got this one here, the long tab is facing down, and we've got it going basically straight up, so that's how we're gonna do it again here. There are pre-tapped holes in the actual uh, side of this. I don't know, can you even see that on there? Eh. I'm like focusing on a monitor that's down here, so it's not the easiest thing to look at. So go ahead, and there's also, um, there's also an Allen key on the top of this because you can center it left and right. Uh, as a matter of fact, this one isn't centered, so I probably should grab an Allen key and do that. I didn't have to do that on this one. This one was actually pretty centered. Take a look at that. Here, grabbed a couple of Allen keys there. And for those of you guys that have wondered, because a couple people have actually asked me about this, uh, either on the forums or just via message, is, so I've got a really screwed up back. You guys know I had bone cancer and I've had a couple of my spinal discs removed. I've also got a, a screwed up upper back. Uh, how do I manage to roll around on the ground and do a lot of this stuff? Well, keep in mind where the camera is doesn't always show everything. I use creepers, I use stools, I use those little like camping chairs that support your back. Right now, let's see if you can see it, probably not, there it is. I have a giant rolled up taped piece of like camping bed foam that I'm kind of like laying on from the side here so it supports my back and puts me at a comfortable angle. Um, don't know why I'm mentioning that, but I guess it's a good reason to mention that just because you're either not the youngest or in the best shape or you got some handicap or something like that, doesn't mean you can't be involved in doing stuff with cars. I have known people that have been paraplegic, so like no working legs, uh, that have been able to race with hand controls. Uh, there was a guy, I think it was on 1320 video, that was doing uh, drag and doing the dunes just with one hand control. So uh, my screwed up back doesn't compare to that, obviously. But with a little bit of creativity, you guys can 
work around most things. You know, I managed to do some light fabrication work for hot rods and stuff like this, the chassis on my truck. I've managed to do most of it through the pretty screwed up back situation that I have, uh, which is unfortunately not getting better anytime soon, uh, but it's a matter of working around it. So don't ever let that stuff stop you. Uh, let me transition back over here. So I got some Allen wrenches. I'm gonna go ahead, let's see what size is this here. I've got a multi-key, uh, let's see. How big you think that is? It's a decent size on there, so let's see. My guess is, what did I grab? I grabbed metric, so we'll start with that. What is this, maybe an eight? I think this is an eight. Of course, this is old and unlabeled. What is this, Eklund Tool, Chicago, Illinois. This thing definitely isn't new. Uh, I think this is probably from the mid 70s since it was in my dad's box. All right, so let's loosen this up here. Oh, and it fits, so I think that's an eight. We're gonna loosen it up just a little bit. And now you can see that slider freely travels left and right here. So I'm gonna center it right about there and go ahead and lock it in with that eight. Make sure to keep it level because that's where those side screws have to attach. And it doesn't need to be crazy tight because it's aluminum, remember? Just enough to cinch it down. There we go. You can slide this guy over the top here. And again, pretty much the way I had it on the old one. And I'm gonna grab, I've got four of these with washers, the little side jack screw guys there. I keep saying jack screw, this isn't really isn't a jack screw, it's just sort of a, a screw or a, nut, a bolt that goes in the side. Uh, and I've got one, two, three, four washers for those, so each one's gonna get a washer. And then those go into these tapped holes in the side here. That last one is the toughest by far, because uh, you've got the wiring harness here that sticks up kind of in the way, and if you're just finger tightening it, it could be a little tough. If you use like an eight millimeter or 10 millimeter uh, nut driver, I bet you that would probably work a lot better. So I'm gonna grab my wrench here, I'm gonna tighten these all up, but before we do that, keep in mind, and I made this mistake last time, you've gotta get our uh, jack screw. God, I keep saying jack screw. All right, pause. Why the hell do I keep saying jack screw? A jack screw is something you tighten against something else to like push it off or to stabilize it. None of these are jack screws. This is just four bolts that go in the side and sort of the uh, top attachment bolt here. I gotta get out of the habit of saying jack screw. That is not the appropriate thing for what I'm doing. This bolt though does need to go into this bracket from the bottom side the way we wanna use it. So I've gotta slide it all the way to one extreme and pop that guy in there. There we go. Thread in like this and slide up from the bottom and then you have it in there. And now our bracket can slide back into the position we want it in and I can tighten these four guys. Kind of snugged them up and then tightened them down. They're all on there now. Bracket is pretty much vertical. See that sticks pretty darn straight up there. So now, We've got it the same way we had the old one here. See if you guys can compare that there. Yeah, a little tough because the wiring harness is in the way, but you guys get the idea. Now, we can stick that into that hole in the bracket there, thread on the nut from the top. Ooh, my shoulder just spasmed there, that really sucked. Uh, and then we can snug it down and get the wiring connected and see if this one works. I really hope it does. I don't want to have to do this again. I mean, they, they were good about honoring the warranty for sure. It took a little bit, but I do not feel like having to do this frequently. So I hope that was just a fluke with the other one. So we'll get this one installed and see if it works. All right, so I flipped over to this side to get a slightly better vantage point uh, sort of into the cavity here. We've got our new light with our mounting bolt here on top and I've got the, uh, the nut that's gonna go onto it. So I need to kind of feed my hand in here from the underside and we can center that light on the bracket. And after that, it's just a matter of getting it tightened down. There is just one hole. You could add a slotted hole if you want. Because this light itself is adjustable, I didn't think that was necessary. However, uh, depending on your specific application, it might be beneficial to do that. All right, so you can already see it starts to fit up in there pretty easily. I'm gonna swap my hands around here so I can get under here. And throw the nut on the bolt. So there it is loosely into place. Now obviously the wiring harness here is hanging in the way. 
and it's not perfectly centered, so what we need to do, slide that off, and we can use the movement that's available to us in the actual bracket to tighten this up and center it where we need it. So from this side here, let's see, if we go a little bit over, tighten up right about, say right about there. Now I'm, I'm at a weird vantage point here, and you guys are too, uh, but from the low angle, this looks about centered. From the high angle where you guys are at, obviously it's gonna look like it's way up towards the top. All right guys, so it might not look like it from where you're at. It's kind of a tough angle, but the light is actually pretty much centered in the cavity from where I'm at. Uh, so we can go ahead, I'm gonna grab the camera down here, see if we can get an angle in, and I'll show you guys the real simple two wire hookup, and then we can test it out and see if it fixed the problem. All right guys, well, the big camera didn't wanna fit in here, so the little glitchy phone's gonna have to work for now, and it seems to be doing its hell of its job freaking out autofocusing. Uh, real quick, this is the wiring lead right here. And it's just two wires. God, the autofocus on this thing is miserable. Uh, the two wires here, and we've got a two wire hookup on our existing harness. Uh, you could grab the old wire pack connector off the stock fog lights if you wanted to, but at least for now, for testing purposes, I wanna go ahead and get one of these into each. There we go. And just stuck in there for now with a little dielectric on it. We'll hit that with some electrical tape, which I got sitting over here above my head somewhere. And we can go up and test the switch. Then I'll go ahead and tuck this back in a loom and do all that stuff in a little bit. But the important thing right now is to see if with our connections in place and it on the bracket here and all set up, if when we hit that switch, it'll actually go ahead and power this light up. So let's jump back to the outside and take a look. And hopefully these lights will both come on. Okay, so, all right. So here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna hit the lights. Both of these, if they aren't already, the switch is off, should come on. Contact. Do I have lights? I can't tell. Let's have to see. Dun, dun, dun. Do I have lights? Yes, we do. We have both lights. Uh, and I'm super happy about that. It looks like the one on the left definitely needs to be adjusted a little bit, but we have both. We have lights. Uh, so overall, I'm just gonna sit down here, right in the middle, get comfy. This is probably gonna be some pretty strange lighting and it's not that comfortable, but I'll sit here for a couple seconds to uh, talk about a couple things. One, I was super glad that went simple. I should probably refine those brackets a little bit. I'm gonna undo the wiring on this side, probably clean them up a little bit. They rusted pretty quick, so I think I should hit them with a slightly better coat of paint than I did before. Uh, and then I'll get those brackets back in there. I'm gonna uh, re-dielectric the working side here and re-plug it back in. That one's got a, a regular contactor on it. This one here is just the wires are tucked into those ports. So I'll have to go back to the stock fog lights and grab those weather pack connectors. Or if you really want to, I guess I could go to the junkyard and grab a new set. They come off pretty much any GM vehicle with those auxiliary lights. Just a two prong connector. You can wire these existing wires into it to give it more of a permanent weather tight connection. Uh, or if you really want to, you can just leave it packed with dielectric and electrical tape, uh, which I'm sure I'd have no problem doing. But since these are gonna be on here for a while and I'm using the factory switch and everything, there's no reason not to use a factory style plug. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. Probably not though, since it's pretty wiring 101 for most of you guys. So uh, glad that worked. Again, if you guys do any rebuilding projects, small stuff like this to big stuff, houses, lives, cars, whatever, remember, this is the rebuild everything Yukon, so use the hashtag rebuild everything on your rebuild projects. I'll definitely try to remember to check those out and I'll give you guys a like, retweet, comment, whatever. Hit me up on Instagram at rev underscore j underscore hd. That's where most of my social media action happens. Subscribe, like, comment, do all the stuff here on the channel if you can. All your support makes a difference for me. Again, I'm not a huge channel, but I, I try to at least get a little bit of content going the best I can. Uh, with spring sort of arriving, that means more automotive content is on its way. Uh, we had a snow again in Wisconsin, which is super annoying and like I said I've been having some problems with my health and shit like that but we're trying to make it happen uh, once again use the hashtag rebuild everything I've got more coming from the hatred copter c10 the rebuild is underway I had picked up some new parts if you guys didn't check out the new fender video I'll have a link to that here in the end card so you guys can definitely take a look at that uh, and so also uh, if you get a chance to check out my buddy midnight ta I'll try to have a
a link to his channel in the comments or the description below down there. Uh, and you can check out his channel. He does a lot of the awesome dyno tuning. He's one of my best friends. He's my dyno tuner and he does a lot of really crazy stuff. He's got some real uh, cool videos coming off his dyno, a lot of late model C7 stuff. So definitely check him out. Uh, there'll be more coming from the channel soon, guys. More on the Rebuild Everything Yukon. Pretty simple success for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Check out everything else. Rambling point, which means it's the end of the video. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.